Dr. Yuli will share with us valuable insights from his recent book, The Spirit of Human Business. Welcome, Dr. Yuli. The floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. And um, I'm really thrilled to be here. Uh, in case you cannot hear me clearly, please interrupt me because right now I can only see my screen. So let me share uh, a little bit about the spirit of human business, uh, my latest book. But it's not so much about the book, it's about the key messages. So here we go. And I'd like to start with uh, our world where we are living in right now, because I think it's totally upside down. It's not what well, you can say. Yeah, we live in the, in the, in the VUCA uh, world, a term you probably have heard before, but what does it mean? Uh, it can start, you can say, look at Corona, you know, and how it changed our life with the various lockdowns, but not just like COVID and the lockdowns. Um, let's look at the digital transformation, the digital revolution with the Internet of Things, with AI and uh, virtual and augmented reality, with uh, geoengineering, and the list goes on and on and on. It seems right now it's just overwhelming. And um, especially since we are living uh, in a very interconnected world, whatever you know, you know, happens somewhere at the other end of the world, it could actually easily affect us in our daily business. And a couple of years ago, uh, the former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, she described, you can say maybe she fore foresaw the future already when she said, our challenge is to understand and master technology of the 21st century with our thinking of the 20th century and institutions of the 19th century. So we have a mismatch. And my hypothesis and is that today's and tomorrow's challenges cannot be resolved by yesterday's technical mindset and approaches. So we have to do something different. And what do we have in mind? Well, the first start, it could be they'd say, well, maybe digital, the digitization uh, could be a driver for change. And to a certain extent it is, but the question I like to raise is what happens to us, the human being? Do we still have the space or is technical taking over our life? And let's do an experiment. Let's be bold, let's be audacious and ask a very simple question. And I'm sure you have heard this before. It is the WTF question, and you're right, WTF stands for what's the future. And this question is not something just like the older generation may ask. It's like it's, it spreads all generations. So it's very simple that the young generation asks the very same question, and we don't have a clue what the future is all about. Well, maybe the future looks like this, that we're talking to robots, not convinced. The late futurologist John Naisbitt said a couple of years ago already, the most exciting breakthroughs of the 21st century will not occur because of technology, but because of an expanding concept of what it means to be human. Sounds simple, I guess. Well, tell you what, let's do something great. And let's start with asking new questions. And the two questions I have in mind are the following. How do we want to live and how do we want to work? Now, these are very basic questions. And you can say, well, what's the difference between what's the future or what will the future look like and how do we want to live and work? Well, the first question, what will the future look like? It's kind of like we react to changes in the future. We don't know what the future will bring, but we have to react. The second set of questions, how do we want to live and work, actually makes us agents of change. It is us who decide how we want to live and work, and it's not technology. We can use technology to answer these questions, but it's us who defines what the future should look like. And that is a key, key question. And why don't we do the following? Let's do an experiment. And in my book, I uh, elaborate on this experiment, on this approach, um, quite extensively, but it can be done quite simple. And the starts, it starts with the question, who are you? And in order to shed some light on this very simple question, um, you may want to think of the following question. What matters to you the most in your personal life and or at work? And then you ask, why does it matter? And indeed, you can ask the why question up to five times. Dig a little deeper, with, so you want to find out what really matters to you. Then 
Imagine someone or something takes away from you what matters to you the most. How will this make you feel? And even worse, hold on one sec. This is not supposed to happen, I guess. Hold on one sec. Um, what happens if nothing happens? That is like if you know somebody takes something away from you and nothing is going to change whatsoever. How does it make you feel? Now, we contrast this with an ideal future. That is, you ask the question, what's the ideal situation? Now, notice I'm not asking what's the solution to being in a dismal situation. The asked question is like, what does the ideal situation look like? In other words, this is the core question. How do you want to live and work if there were no constraints whatsoever? And then the third set of questions talks about practice. Imagine the vision were viable, that it is realistic one way or the other. You don't have to know exactly how, you know, all the various steps, but try to answer the following question. If the vision were realistic, if it were feasible, what, do you can, what can you do now, or let's say within a couple of days, that brings you a tiny step closer to your vision? And when you look at what really drives you, the motivation, the vision, and the practice, you want to make sure that whatever you have written down, there is an overlap, because this describes you. Now, the second step, or the second dimension, talking about building a human business is the following. Let's look at work, or you can say, look at, look, let's look at any project you have, maybe a project that is not running as smoothly as you like, like it to be. That is, our house or your house is on fire. And the motivational questions you want to ask are the following. What's the issue and why is it a problem? Who or what is affected? And then what happens if nothing happens? Uh, it's kind of similar to like what we talked about the um, individual, the personal motivation. We really try to you know, dig a little deep and find out what's the motivation. Then contrast it with your, the vision of your project or your business. That is, what's the ideal situation you like to be in, in your business or in your project? And then you ask, well, if the vision were realistic, what can we do now? What's the next step we can do that could move us a bit closer to our vision? And the overlap of the motivation, the vision, and the practice of the business aspect, we're talking about value generation. It's not cost anything, we're talking about value. Let's have a look at the third dimension. The ter third dimension is all about people, it's all about us. In other words, teams. The questions for the teams are the following. What's important to us as a team and why is it important? What do we need? And how can we get better and learn continuously? Day in, day out. Then the vision for the team is, what would be the ideal situation? What would be the ideal team? What it would look like? And then practice. The guiding question is the following. What are our rules and principles of engagement that count for our motivation and vision? Oops, one sec. The overlap of the motivation, the vision, and the practice on the team level is not just a team. It's a performing team, a high-performing high team. And this is where, when, whenever you have ever, if you ever worked on a high-performing team or you were in sports, you never want to miss it. You always like to build, you know, this team again. But the key is there needs to be an overlap of the motivation, vision, and the practice. So... If you look at all these dimensions, the three dimensions, the personal, the business, and the team level, the overlap, I refer to it as, as a wow experience. You integrate the personal, business, and the team MVPs. And this is, we're talking truly about magic because it's purpose-driven. It's fun and joyful to work in. You nurture synergy, you cultivate learning, you leave a legacy, and it's much, much bigger. This is what the wow experience is all about. Now, the question is, how can you take the leap how can you build or how can you transform your business, your environment, building such an environment you know, where you have the true MVP? Well, let's have a look at some of the characteristics of a human business. 
Well, not too surprising. The focus of human business is on human beings, mensch. And it's not esoteric at all because most customers are actually people. So do not just satisfy your customers, delight your customers. The prerequisite for this is that you know who your customers are and not just the existing customers. You also want to think of what could be our future customers, the so-called non-customers. Then you want to collaborate in, in, your, in your business, in your teams, and you want to allow the teams to build networks. And it's not like top-down hierarchies. It's dynamic, it's adaptable, it's very fast, and can actually be quite fun. Co-create a happy workplace. You can ask the question, what does make me happy today? By the way, this is like when you're in an, working in an agile setting and you ask the three questions each morning or in the afternoon, whenever you have your daily, what have I accomplished yesterday? What am I about to do today? And are there any impediments I'm facing where I may need help? Add the fourth question, what makes me happy today? Or ask the team and see what happens and do it on a daily basis. And once you have accomplished this, you get a better idea how to build a happy workplace. It makes a huge difference. Unfold, unfold high performance. It's not a contradiction that you, when you uh, build a happy workplace that we're talking performance, because after all, we have to deliver something for the customers, otherwise we will be out of business. And then see continuous self-improvement. Just because you perform does not mean that this is gonna be sufficient tomorrow, that you can compete in the marketplace. And you know what? Choose joy as your business driver. It's not just about money, especially when you build a workplace where you like, you know, where you nurture the people, where you unfold the talents. Choose joy as your business driver and see what happens. If you have, if you would like to learn more about joy as a business driver, I recommend the book Joy Inc. by Richard Sheridan, or just visit, you know, the various TED talks he has given in the last couple of years. Then. Seek to make an impact, not on a temporary one, but make an attention, well, a tangible and long lasting uh, impact. That means reach out to your peers, reach out to the community, society, and see what you can build together. Take on responsibility, not just for your own team, for your business, but also for society, for the community, because you're part of it, and then create a legacy. In sum, in a nutshell, the characteristics of a human business is that you focus on human beings. The purpose of a company is to serve human beings and make a difference. That is, people generate value for other people. It's a people business. The organization lets build a happy workplace that is like, you know, encourage a small, cross-functional, autonomous and self-organizing teams that are organically evolving, adaptive, and have adaptive structures. It's not top-down, it's not about linear hierarchies, it's a fast-paced environment. Innovation, well, of course there's innovation, but it's not just product and process innovation, it's also people innovation. Recall or you know, understand that products and processes do not innovate, it's always people. So people innovation is the core element of any innovation we can think of, regardless if you work in NHR or in a real product development. And the results is about value generation, value for the customers, for the employees, and for the business, actually also for the society. It's holistic business value, and you balance short, mid, and long-term goals. If you compare the old world, the Tayloristic business, where people are treated as human resources, machines. Well, you have a choice. Maybe you would like to compete with machines, that computers, AI, and what have you. I'm not sure if you can win and survive or build a human business where you focus on us, the, human, the humans, and where we can actually work on the two questions. How do we want to live in the future? How do we want to work in the future? And what can we do now? to achieve this. This is the spirit of human business. And, but don't make a mistake. It's not something that can happen overnight. It's the metamorphosis. And in my book, I explain some of the steps a business can go through from traditional business, say to an agile business, and then to human business. And 
um, following the conference, you will get a handout where you see some of the, can have a look at some of these slides, and this slide is um, included. And it's like basically covers what we have just uh, talked about in the last couple of minutes. So this, I can say in a nutshell, is the spirit of human business. Um, if you like, please reach out to me either by email, WhatsApp, or on LinkedIn. Um, I encourage you, of course, to have a look at uh, my book, The Spirit of Human Business. And let's build human business together. One last word. People ask me about my personal driver in business. Well, my motivation or actually my vision is to help establish human business or related approaches as the new global norm by the year 2030. I think it is feasible and it starts with us. And I'm, you know, I'm happy that I, I could speak here because this is the audience. We are the shapers of the future. So let's go for it. Thank you. Back to the... Thank you so much, Dr. Yuli. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. What can I do as a single employee to trigger the transformation of my own business to a human business? Well, it's a, that's a very good question. Um, I briefly introduced or talked about the MVP, Motivation, Vision and Practice. You first want to find out what is your personal MVP. Then you share it with, uh, let's say, your colleague, with your peers and see may, what their MVP is. And if maybe you want to do it to, together as a team and then look at your business. In other words, you build, you build on this MVP and, and your environment and then share it with others or you convince possible skeptics with results. I think this can make all the difference as long as it's driven by being human. Thank you so much. The time is uh, quite strict for me today. I have to go with the schedule. So uh, thank you for sharing your deep knowledge and expertise with us. It was our honor. Thank you. I would like